。夏天的时光稍纵即逝，转眼间联赛就已只剩四周征程，每一场比赛都显得尤为重要。破壳之后是选择沉寂还是继续前行？低谷之后是甘于暗淡还是厚积薄发？从春天的辉煌。到夏天的困局，留给他们的时间又还有多少？告别老伙计，继续前行。金色的雨会再次落下吗？孤独领跑联盟一整个夏天，谁能阻止涅槃后所向披靡的凤凰？两大豪门再战长安。是捍卫荣耀，坚守主场，还是反客为主，上阵扬名？真正的好戏，才正要开始。Welcome, everybody. It's week A, last day of the week, and yes, it's Dominus Appreciation Day. Why not just share our appreciation with just whatever the hell they were doing? I mean, I'm just surprised that there was no actual Earth cosplay in that. It was the Earth theme song. Where was it, Raz? No, it was good dancing. It was definitely better than what I could provide. So, uh, you know, it is Domination, Dominus Appreciation Day. We do this for every team, every organization in the LPL. We do this actually since uh, uh, 2018, if I remember correctly. Uh, we've been uh, my favorite. One was uh, Beachy Gaming when they came out and had their beatboxing on stage. Uh, definitely could hear that all the way from where we were commentating at the time, but it's it was great. It's good stuff. They're going up against Rogue Warriors tonight, so that's going to be a fun series to be able to see them play out in the Hong Chao venue here in Shanghai. It's a great day to be an LPL fan. Not only do we have the games in store for us today, but also just the league itself. But we're going to check out the standings. Well, right now we're checking out the team Rogue Warriors in front of you. That's Holder coming out of the top laner. Jungler Wei Yan, mid laner Hua Tian, and their bottom lane Zhang Wuji and Huang Gai. Now, I came into this split saying that uh, Rogue Warriors were coming in as a playoff squad. That's not even close to being the case. They've been suffering, unfortunately. And a lot of the, my expectations were based on the fact that Zhang Wuji, as the rookie AD carry, came out and had insane performances consistently. Holder came into the team in 2018 summer and he had amazing performances. 
Tell me why I'm wrong. What the hell happened here? Well, you know, they just felt flat, probably because their uh, lineup was getting stale, probably because they didn't have any breath of fresh air. I like how they've subbed in Wei Yan, no longer Haro. I mean, Haro had some great performances, but he just wasn't what the team needed. Now we'll take a look at their opponents. Yeah, going up against Dominus. Natural up in the top lane. Jungle A I Tong. Twyla up in the mid lane, and of course their bottom side of the map, Gala and Mark. That's the side of the map that will not change, but the fact that Natural's coming in for Chang Hong, who of course, announced his retirement on Weibo. And Ai Tong coming in, uh, big surprise, not even a champion difference, of course. When he first came in, uh, you know, subbed in f uh, in the jungle position, he literally came out with a Kindred. So yeah. this is more like, hey, you know what? I still came in with the same champion pool. It's more so Breath of Fresh Air. You were talking about Breath of Fresh Air coming in from Rogue Warrior's side. Dominus certainly heard the calls. But just so you guys know, of course, Raz coming in. Uh, send your well wishes to Hysterix, who's currently in the chat. So there you are. Um, and also, I'm alongside Preacher. How are you doing, oh, buddy? Not too bad, not too bad. This is the first time that we've actually been casting together, but it's also a great game for us to be casting on. I want to just quickly touch on the point that you were talking about. Uh, the top side swap in from DMO Natural and also Itong. Now, I was here when they were last playing, and I love to see Natural back onto this team. I mean, checking out his champion pool, the Fiora, the Jax, yes. and also the Aatrox, all three of them looked amazing. And I have to say, Putting uh, a carry into the top lane might not work so well into the meta, but it works on this team. Yeah, before we get too in-depth of this, let's just go straight towards the standings. Take a look. Because, as we already alluded to with both Rogue Warriors and Dominus, they're not holding up too well. Dominus right now, 14th place. Right next to the bottom three of OMG and VG Gaming, Rogue Warriors. While they still have a pretty good shot if they would have a three series win streak, they're still struggling at the current state. Look, uh, it's the classic pirate meme. Yeah, technically, yes, but no. I mean, they're mathematically in the running to make top eight, but it's going to be pretty much every single one has to be a victory. They are playing towards LNG, who has dropped down one of the dark horses uh, since the last time we took a look. LNG, of course, a series off from JD, our spring split finalist. Biggest change coming in from yesterday, actually. FPX, when they went up against EDG and mm. ended up taking up that victory, secured themselves a playoff spot. They are 10 and 1 currently. Worst case scenario, they're 10 and 5, and still not enough to bump them. I mean, not 10 and 5. Uh, yeah, 10 and 5. Mm. But still enough, not enough to bump them out of the running. So, congratulations to them. That was the biggest lack of surprise, you could say. Yeah. But going into today, uh, Rogue Warriors going up against Dominus as our first set in Shanghai, and to end the night, we're going Team WE versus Invictus Gaming, the two oldest organizations in China. Uh, that's going to be in Xi'an. Yeah, that's going to be a great matchup. Of course, everybody who creates an account on the Chinese client does get a WE icon. Yeah. I, know, I know I got mine uh, stuck up there. Of course, it is WE taking out that victory back before the LPL even started. But IPL 5 was the yeah. event that got them that one. That one was a beautiful one to see. But we've got a great matchup, of course, coming up first. It's DMO versus Rogue Warriors. Of course, it's DMO Appreciation Day. And this is possibly the best chance they have to actually pick up a win, Raz. So everything's turning up Millhouse. I do not remember remember, other than Vici Gaming actually, Vici Gaming, the, whenever an appreciation day has come through, the team ended up winning. Yeah. It's not a surprise that Dominus is having their appreciation day when they're going up against Rogue Warriors and not say when they're going up in, against Invictus yeah. Gaming. It's a good opportunity for the fans of Dominus to at least have that good shot. Hopefully they go to a, you know, a three game series. They have a good competitive one. They've been getting far better as you've been mentioning uh, coming into today. Yeah, I mean, not only have the changes also worked out, but the patches themselves, they've definitely worked out towards this team. I mean, if you take a look at the two carry players, Twyla and Gala, their champions are currently the champions that are standing up right now. You've got Azir and you've also got Siva. Both of them scale so well. So let's go into the clips, yeah. of course, because we've seen Dominus play recently and they have been looking better a lot of it has come into the team fights and point out one point for me it's going to be natural mm -hmm. how they've been playing this one out so when they went up against uh, jdg went the full distance but they ended up taking out that win they did and it was because natural got such a good laning phase as well but because he came out so far ahead he could actually teleport into the middle of the team fight and the fact that his jacks was such a priority in terms of damage and also the front line nobody could target his back line yeah and it was still a messy series jd is still not looking uh, all too good at the moment, but the fact that Dominus have been getting better and better is largely because of the changes that we've referenced. You know, the fact that Natural is coming in for uh, Chang Hong, and the fact that Ai Tong coming in for uh, Xiao Peng. Well, I would say Xiao Peng is still an incredibly talented jungler. A lot of the problems that we have is communication, and the communication is getting better. But now they're going up against Rogue Warriors. 
talk to me about Rogue Warriors because as we roll the clips, Ooh. their team fights have been equally messy, but they've been coming out as victors. Of course. So the change up from Rogue Warriors, Haro was out and Wei Young was brought in. I love his game so far. Olaf and also the Gragas, his early game impact can never be understated. Rogue Warriors definitely needed that because of course they played towards the early game and their lanes. Yeah, and it ultimately got Holder the lead. And the fact that, you know, when Rogue Warriors end up falling through some of these series, the fact that Holder is still able to get those advantages and he's able to still dictate fights, and in that series was just ahead every one of those games. The fact that it turns into now natural versus Holder, it's gonna be a great matchup to be able to watch. Who you who do you think is the better of the two initially? Look, all right, so we got the stats up right now, and it's a little bit misleading because Natural has just one uh, one series under his belt. Of course, we're not counting the times that he was Ale back on OMG. So that 9.5 KDA is a little bit inflated, but I love his champion pool because that's what his uh, team needs. They're severely lacking in damage in the early game because they like to play towards late with the two scaling carries. So he is the punch they need to really bridge them there. And I love the fact that Natural is going to get tested versus Holt. Both of them are very much split push bruisers. The fact that both players are essentially similar minded. Uh, it, who do you think ends up coming into this series? I'm not saying who is going to win, but who gets the edge based off of team play style? Look, if you're just talking about a straight 1v1, I have to say the natural looks better inside of his laning phase. However, it's never a 1v1, and junglers are always included. When you bring those two in as well, Wei Yan and Holder have been working so well. I mean, it's so hard to discount them, and so far we haven't seen the communication between Aitong and natural really be on point. Yeah, and you add Hua Tian into the mix, oh, and, yeah. and the previous replay when Rogue Warriors went to Game 3, Hua Tian took over. He, his Talia in particular was able to go to the top side of the map and create a three-man tent that they pitched on the enemy top laner. But just for a reminder for everybody out there, not only is Mordekaiser disabled, the Talia uh, and Jace are going to be globally disabled as well. So sad face for Hua Tian won't be able to pick that one up. Yeah, so coming into the pick and ban, that's going to be massive. J Jace has also been a really big pickup. You have to say, though, with the Azir off, Corky becomes very high priority because, of course, Watian has played that champ. Yeah, and currently, if you've been watching Global League of Legends, you've been seeing Tristan and Corky find themselves on the top side of the map. So it's going to be fun to be able to see uh, what we end up getting in priority. But remember, it's 9.14, and largely the support priority hasn't changed. Karma getting banned out, and you're expecting the Yumi uh, and the Lux to still be heavily prioritized, even with the Lux nerf that came through. They have been up there, so definitely watch out for those. Now, we were talking about the Corki, but uh, throughout the other regions, we've seen a nice counter to both the Corki and the Azir B Vyga, so don't even count that out in terms of uh, 9.14. I mean, players haven't fully figured it out, and if they want to pick that one up, could potentially work in their favor. Olaf getting first picked by Rogue Warriors. Early pressure in the jungle seems to be the go-to. I want to be able to see what they end up picking in mid and uh, top side to see if they can support that. On Dominus's side though, bot side pressure. Mm. It's gonna be both the uh, Varus and the Tom Kench getting locked in. And I like this as well because it means that Gala's expanding from not just playing until the late game, of course, specializing on the Siva, but also picking up the early game Varus. With the safety of Tom Kench, I'm not even gonna call it a nerf because he can still eat up his ADC. He's gonna be just safe. And we already mentioned that the Corky could still go towards the top lane, so I'm not gonna just say it's gonna be a Hua Tian mm. pick. And although Azir getting banned out, doesn't mean that that handshake still won't be played through. I want to see what Twyla ends up picking up for himself. Now, when he came into the league, he was a great Cassiopeia player, so he's going to benefit a lot from the buff that came through on 9.14. Uh, so we'll see what he ends up picking as a result. Please stop it. No. His hovers consistently have been trolling. So. Yeah, don't, don't do this one. Okay, so going back to the Kaz point, I like it. Another champion that I really like is, of course, the Akali. Very strong coming out on 9.14. I'd like to see the uh, Assassins eventually shift the mid lane matchup away. This one's not guaranteed to go into the mid lane, but uh, the whole point about it is the fact that because you can abuse the early game deficits of both the Azir and the Corki, uh, should be able to switch the meta. Let's see what we end up getting, but Rogue Warrior is already showing that the Corki and Ezreal, giving them a Pretty decent poke within their own composition. Want to see if the support bands start coming through from Dominus, knowing that they still have to pick up not just the support, but also one of their two solo lanes. Yeah, so. Well, that could be one place that they could turn their eyes upon. Now, I'm interested to see if Kled is actually a champion that's going to be prioritized. He is something that definitely fits within Natural's wheelhouse. So uh, getting the buffs on this patch to the point where you can actually deny away healing from your opponents works into pretty much anything. But especially if uh, Wei Yan on the Olaf ganks his lane, he could deny away so much of the healing that enables the early game. Yeah, definitely. One of the problems, though, of picking the 
cled up in the top lane that we've seen in the LCS is the fact that an AD carry can be just plopped right there. I'm not just talking about the Tristana, but the Corky that's currently picked up by Rogue Warriors could just be sent to Holder. Go Klepto and end up smacking the Kled quite a few times. So still want to see what the priority is going to be. The Jax, the Renekton being banned by Dominus, while Rogue Warriors mm. have finished their ban. It's going to be the Cassiopeia. So already recognizing that Twala yeah. is the Cassiopeia god. Yeah. And then banning out the Nico as well. Yeah, taking off the Nico. It's interesting because Kennen is also a top pick inside of this uh, patch. So could potentially be the case. They want to play it safe because they want to get the counter lane. Of course, on blue side, you can only counter one of the two lanes and uh, your top lane if it is a mid lane Irelia, will be uh, still be able to be counted. Yeah, we still need to find out where that Irelia ends up going. It's a smart ban to take the Renekton out there. We've seen that matchup way too many times and know how it ends up going. Rogue Warriors, we'll, still, we'll see their full composition right here. Braum being locked in alongside the Ezreal. So double AD carry, great amount of bruisers there. I love this skirmishing style that Rogue Warriors are already showing themselves. Not only that, but also Rogue Warrior sets up bottom lane ganks so easily. Olaf's big problem is the fact that he doesn't bring any stuns into his kit. So if Braum can land one of his Qs onto either of the two solo laners, uh, either of the two bot laners on DMO, then uh, very hard to actually get out of that lockup. GP's gonna be the lock in there for Holder. This composition Rogue Warriors are showing has great scaling pressure, but I wonder, I'm concerned there for the Olaf, the fact that he won't be able to necessarily have the shove in either top lane and mid lane. So it's gonna be a struggle is my uh, initial take. Dominus locks in the Zoe, so that's going to be an Aurelia going up in the top lane against the GP. Mm. Good lane matchups by Dominus, though. Don't get to see Zoe nearly as much, but since the nerfs came through and a lot of the assassins in the mid lane, she's been starting to poke her head in. We saw it you know, come in for JD as well. Very naturally, you're going to be seeing Yagao pick it up, and now Twyla ends up landing it itself. Yeah, that's the point that I wanted to touch on. The fact that the Zoe is primarily good into Assassins, now into a Corky. Of course, the range is there, so she's not going to be 100% safe. One thing that definitely screams out to me from DMO's composition is they want to poke. They got the Varus and also the Zoe, so their sieging potential is up there, and they can definitely control the uh, objectives of Dragon and Rift Herald. Yeah, both teams definitely nailing their version of poke composition so it's going to be fun to be able to see which team ends up getting the ARAM down first. Now, surprise, surprise, both organizations aren't faring too well and their run into the playoffs, or at least trying to get into that eighth place spot, has been dimmed quite mm -hmm. significantly in their previous sets. You want to be able to see some improvement in performances. Now, I'm going to direct you towards Dominus that have okay. made significant improvements and you are looking towards them picking up a win today seeing that they only have two series underneath them. What do you think they need to improve on? So just take this win here tonight. They need to be more proactive in the early game. So that's, of course, one thing that Aitong has been bringing to his team. Uh, when I turn my mind back towards him, the safety that he provided on the Silas into the Karthus matchup of his last game versus JDG was great. And I just hope to see that he can actually influence the lanes as opposed to keep them safe, because that's the, uh, what they need. They just need a little kick to really start dominating. Yeah, if you see the lane matchups here, Seems like Dominus uh, has gotten exactly what you wanted, so it's more so on execution now to be able to get the early game under their belts. Want to see what we end up getting from the Varus? Been seeing a lot of either, you know, lethal tempo or the lethality. Yeah. They get lethality, this is a demon composition. I'm, I'm actually uh, excited to see what Gala ends up picking up for himself. Ooh. He's usually the front to back style AD carry rather than trying to get that early game underneath them. So want to see if there's a change in style here for Dominus. You need to see a change overall. One of these teams need to improve. Going to be able to go into game one, hopefully. Let's see what we get here. Starting the day off. There's always one. Yep. You see, we have a special guest in the crowd. Don't exactly know who it is. We'll find out as the day goes on. But as you can tell, louder Dominus chants because it is Dominus Appreciation Day. Let's see if that empowers Dominus. They may not have a venue for themselves, but mm -hmm. let's see if they can take control of Hong Chao for tonight. Yep. So far, 
is just going to be a standard trade. So Dominus reading the map very well to know that they were going to get invaded onto the blue. Not going to lose anything in vertical jungling means that it's going to actually quite favor Itong because he's uh, set up to gank both top lane and mid lane given this start. And we'll end up seeing, of course, Olaf favoring the bot side of the map is going to give Zhang Wuji and Huang Gai a leg up. And we kind of need to see that. Zhang Wuji, who has been a phenomenal rookie and certainly a nominee for Rookie of the Year, has been struggling to split in the early laning phase, hasn't been prioritizing early champions. And so for them to be finding consistent deficits, that's one of the major reasons. That's it, Raz. I want to see those E's going forward, not backwards. So he definitely needs to be enabled. Once again, we were talking about in Champ Select how this bottom lane actually enables the ganking, uh, the ganking potential from Wei Yan into the bottom lane. So I'd like to see those setups come out from one guy. But so far, they'd rather just deny away the CS, which is not a terrible strategy. Going back to what we were talking about in the expectations for Gala, there are so many squishy champions on Rogue Warriors that a lethality build and a heavy poke focus Ooh. Would not be bad. Oh, almost getting that solo oh. kill. Twyla just shoving him out. He just actually chugged his last corrupting potion, so Huatian's in a really tricky position. Yeah, I'm not actually favoring the stay. I would prefer him to go back because if he gets hit by another E, that's just a dead corky. This is very dangerous. But remember, picking himself up the cleanse specifically for this matchup. So if he bases, he loses this entire wave. Mm -hmm. Gonna be a tricky position, so he's gonna bring in Weyan to help him out. That's it, yeah. And it feels bad when you're early jungling, especially an Olaf is disrupted here. So now, looking at the oh Olaf, my oh God. no. All right, we yep. need to evacuate the vicinity. That's Olaf it. is going to be able to take care of this one, but you need to go back. Okay, so it's not actually the worst case scenario if Wei Yan decides to stay here, but once again, all eyes on the jungling early game, of course, Itong is <laughs> watching all of them. What is hell? Now, Itong was confused as all hell, thinking <laughs> that that bush was warded, but Holder just tracing his footsteps unknowingly, ending up getting that vision in there, so. Fairly safe when he's on the you know, worst side of the matchup. Not only the worst side of the matchup, but you know, Itong has full autonomy on the top side of the map. Mm -hmm. So, pretty damn good position that he's had himself in. Yeah, and it just means that DMO's top side can play very safe. Even if they're getting pushed in, they will always have the priority. And it's hard to push into an Irelia in all honesty, because she can always dash onto you. Speaking of difficult because of the early skirmishes that Fuatian was under, he may still have flash, but... 7 CS under, and that's without Zoe picking up the wave when she's finally coming back to the lane. So we talked about the early laning phase for Dominus being well in their favor. It's working out well in the mid lane. Top lane technically, and you expect the Varus to be overtaking the matchup when Weyan's not looming over them. So. What do you want to see out of Rogue Warriors to get themselves out of this situation? Right now, Rogue Warriors, they need to uh, just focus on bot. They need to double down. I mean, uh, we were talking about how it's just very difficult in general to set up for the ganks on the top side of the map because of the lack of CC. So they need to really start finding their advantages fast. Now, they have a little bit of leeway, of course, because once level 6 kicks in, Holder's ultimate can influence the bottom lane. And naturally, we're looking at the uh, package timings from yeah. Watian. I mean, when I look at Rogue Warriors' composition, I think they can take a step back as long as they get out of the laning phase without being in a, in a decent uh, you know, deficit. Then they're in a proper place to support the Olaf. Olaf is their bridge. Got Corky, Ezreal, and GP. It's the Exodia of, of nice scaling comps. So I'm pretty happy with what Rogue Warriors have themselves. They've had, they kind of ran this same style when they went up against Victory 5. Mm -hmm. and. My biggest issue with that one was that they didn't have a bridge at all. They also had a poor jungle matchup. So at least this time around, they're able to not only get the level one in their favor, but uh, now Wei Yan has a way to help out his lane. That's it. They definitely need something to be winning Lord on the have lane. Mercy. But, oh, no. This could. Okay. So not, this is life for Hua Tian. Mm, uh, not as punishing as expected, but damn. Yeah. That is hard. Twyla coming into this one, trying to prove some of the haters wrong. A lot of the problems that Dominus ended up having were solo lane specific. You know, Chang Kong retiring. Uh, and you also see Twyla having more off performances than on. And this is one that really gets you playing around him. Especially, not only just off this pick. We saw what Knight's able to do when he acquires the Zoe. This could be a really quick game if Dominus can be clean around Pilo with how he's currently performing. That's it. So far, oh, this is punishing. So pretty much two Force backs already onto Hua Tian means that Hua Tian is going to be so delayed in terms of his Trinity Force. We've seen very fast ones, especially because uh, the turret plating has accelerated builds, but there is no way that Hua Tian's ever pushing out of this lane. Yeah, Hua Tian has some sustain underneath him at the very least, not just based off the corrupting potions that he's fully chugged, but off the fact that he has call 
which has nice life on kids. That's always a positive. But with the fact that he's been getting poked pretty significantly, and Twyla hasn't even used his teleport, so he can go. He is actually going back to base right now. It's going to be an immense amount of pressure on Huatian, but first dragon ended up getting picked up by Rogue Warriors. Yeah, and if we're not going to be checking in uh, on any specific plays in the early game, then we should be checking in on the itemization to see uh, where the two matchups stand once and for all. Already passing over the blue is nice for Huatian. That's something that he needs. Also going to reduce the cooldown on W, so he can dodge out more often. Well, which items are you interested in most? Well, um, right now we're already seeing the uh, the Sork Boots picked out by Twyla. He just wants to get absolute uh, lane dominance, and it is working because we've seen two Force Backs, and now that he's got the item, should be expecting a whole lot more. Something I wanted to point out as well is the fact that, you know, coming into this game, one of our questions after we see uh, Hua Tian get slaughtered here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Okay, he's fine. But then Sadly, again, that's enough Twyla has heal as well, so he's going to have an HP advantage, pretty significant one at that. Um, there we go. Is the fact that Gala has lethal tempo and is going straight towards a BF sword, so you expect him to maybe go towards a crit build. That's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to watch and take an, a look at. It's fun, only because, as we mentioned coming into the game, that Gala is not the type to go into an early game, poke heavy uh, build on an AD carry. He is pretty confident in his own mechanics in a late game front to back team fight. And so the fact that he's going towards this focus on an AD. Uh, Attack speed, crit, perhaps, uh, Varus is going to be an interesting adaptation. Yeah, I mean, it's working backwards from the logic that Gala doesn't actually like to play the uh, poke from Varus. My However, god, Twyla is damn. fully dominating this matchup. Not only is the CS deference becoming a constant, uh, but the fact that Wei On has to be in vision. When he wants to be out, you know, out of vision, pressuring Itong whenever he can, Itong can pass around him easily because of what? Twyla is currently providing mid. That's it. Finally, Twyla is actually influencing other parts of the map as well. The fact that Wei Yan can't actually even hold the lane into this Zoe and Hua Tian is being pushed back so often. Uh, the force backs coming out from Twyla means that this mid lane is a pressure point for DMO, and they are pushing it constantly. It's not even being focused by Aitong, but in all honesty, it means that Wei Yan is being controlled as well. Ooh, very close. If Wei Yan have gotten slept on that one. Would have had to force his oh, ultimate go. all in coming on towards the top lane. Now Holder is going straight. Oh no, can he actually survive Wait this a one? A full all in. Oh. Natural will be safe, but you're seeing the all in to the bot side as well as Wayan has to use his own ultimate. The Tom Kench is fully committing as well. Yeah. Has to flash over the wall. Aitong will follow. You're seeing oh. a lot of follow. A flash on top, but Twyla will end up picking the first blood. Actually, Corky ends up getting the kill on Aurelia as well as he rotates up to the top lane. Yeah, let's talk about the last thing first, Raz. Of course, Hua Tian is known for roaming, especially to the top side of the map. We were touching on it before this game actually started, how he is influencing the top lane before it was with the Talia. Oh, man, coming down. Braum is the one who's going to get caught, but should be able to get out free. A lot of pressure coming in from Dominus in the bottom lane, recognizing that Hua Tian will not follow. Yeah, just try to burn the ultimate from Huang Gai, because that was the natural disengage that they were looking towards. However, going back to the point of Hua Tian, uh, engaging the top side with Talia being on a global ban, his next best champion is Corki with the package, obviously getting the kill top side. Yeah, and so you can already see it at the bottom of your screen, the fact that mm -hmm. he went all the way up top and Aurelia is just going to die here. The fact that Aurelia was so close to being able to pick up that 1v1 and was able to do so much there, but of course, Hua Tian recognizes the attitude that he had in the lane, wants to stick around and try and get the kill on Holder underneath the turret, came up on punishment. Yeah, good calls from DMO, uh, good calls from Rogue Warriors, sorry, to actually influence the top side of DMO. We've seen Natural uh, really propel when he is uh, left unchecked, so checking in with the Aurelia and uh, checking her out early. There we go. This is warded, but unfortunately, Dominus is just simply not in the area. Went back to base, so perfect timing from Rogue Warriors. I want to see where they end up throwing this one down. What would you like to see? I mean, obviously, the number one is always busting down mid turret, but it would be a plate gank more than anything else. You can't necessarily take down that turret uh, entirely, so uh, they might actually hold on to it for quite a while, Raz. I mean,. We were thinking about the global composition from Rogue Warriors, the ultimate from Gangplank, and also the roam from Hua Tian. If they can get multiple kills bottom lane, they could hard push with that. Yeah, definitely want to just free up your AD carry. Weyan's up top lane, reading that Natural just wants to find another 1v1. So. Man, this is so punishing. Natural, he wants the straight 1v1, and he would excel so far if it was a 1v1, but being thwarted by Hua Tian and, not Wei and now Weyan, 
You Did expected this coming into today, talking about the fact that Rogue Warriors are going to be pitching up a tent, and this is your first member. Why not ultimately plant? There we go. Finally yeah, goes right. in. Natural doesn't have a way out. Be able to oh, get a way. So close to being able to get the kill. Not going to happen, but at least Dominus are going to try for a trade, picking up Ocean Dragon. Doesn't seem to be any. Oh, no. That was close. That, that was close. I was holding my breath. But didn't it wasn't have, meant to be. Yeah, didn't have vision on the objective, so ultimately, Sejuani ends up picking it up and is going to be trading Dragon. So, Mountain Dragon going over to Rogue Warriors super early on, and Dominus ends up getting the Ocean Dragon as a response. Mm, yeah, however, the first turret was just so impactful, and even going to get a second charge down as well. This is going to be really, really good for Rogue Warriors because it frees up Holder. They can instigate the 1 3 1 much sooner than DMO, and in comparison, while Natural does get a longer lane, it's still going to be very hard for the Irelia to ever get onto the map and actually make an impact. Yeah, and if we, you know, take a step back and Look at the composition and ex expectations we had coming in. We looked at Dominus and said, great, not only is it Dominus Appreciation Day, but they came in recognizing that they wanted to play it early. And mm -hmm. early on in this game, 12 minutes in, the goal lead is currently there for Rogue Warriors, albeit fairly small. Do you, what do you want to see from Dominus for them to start turning the tides back into their favor? Well, it all stems from vision, Raz, because I want to see uh, Itong. Well, we're looking at him. We're going to have to take a look at how much damage Itong is going to be placing down wow. on Wei Yan as he just outright dies the second time that they go back towards him. Doesn't have flash, so no way for him to get out of the situation again. And it's also a repeat play of the first time that yeah. was caught out because it's just DMO's bottom lane rotating with the Tom Kenj ultimate. There's not a lot you could do as Olaf. You dodge CC, but you can't dodge two people teleporting in on you. Definitely looks like a replay, mm. is what, what I'm going to say. Thankfully, he's going to come back into the map and should have Flash the next time they try that again. Yeah, it's great. However, looking, uh, check it in with the builds once again. We were talking about how Gala could have potentially gone with an attack speed uh, build. He's looking like he's going towards the Essence Reaver, which means still poke available in terms of what his, uh, what his MO should be. If he's been maxing his Q first that we'll check in with, then it means that uh, DMO have got really great Siege, especially yeah. with the two kills. Yeah, definitely going to be the case. And you can see the... Uh, pickaxe coming through. Perhaps he's going to be going towards a rage blade. I still want to see. That could easily just be an IE. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, Dominus being able to out pressure bot side. I recognize that the Sejuani was there and the vision control was there, so they had to respect Twyla's uh, pressure if he were to come down to the bot side of the map. But at the very least, coming into this game, we needed Gala and Mark to pressure this side of the map and be that sole focus because they have been the primary carries for the full year. And the fact that they've been losing out in solo lanes have put a lot of extra burden on Gala. At least this time around, Twilight's been playing well in this game, but you know, what's your expectations here for Gala, especially with the Varus? I mean, we were thinking about him dominating lane, but we have to define our words. So dominating is not the place to be. Only two turret plates compared to the full turret in top lane means that obviously it's a better trade for Rogue Warriors top side than DMO's bottom side. Yeah, yeah and Gala is just nowhere near as accelerated. I mean, if he runs into Holder in a straight 5v5, I actually think that Rogue Warriors have the natural advantage because of the gold. So once again, while they did win the bottom lane, they didn't hard stomp it to the point where they have a clear advantage. Advantage. We're definitely going to be seeing how the fights end up coming through, uh, simply because with how well Twyla has been playing, even though the gold through mid lane has certainly evened out, you want to be able to see what they can get off of a simple Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Mm -hmm. Like Not only do they have that going for them, but the Sejuani who's on your screen, being able to land an ultimate would go a while away. I don't think Quatian is going to be the target since he does have his cleanse up and available, but there's a lot of members on this team that you could end up targeting. The pick is strong, and you uh, didn't even mention the fact that Gala has his ultimate for the follow-up or even for the first ultimate because, yeah. of course, very low cooldown with the Essence Reaver, not one of the highest uh, priority abilities if there is a straight 5v5. So, of course, when you take a look over at DMO, the Siege and also the pick out with uh, the Sleepy Trouble Bubble and the ultimate from Varus, very strong. 156 CS there for really up in the top lane. The fact that she has that much CS with the amount of pressure that Wei Yan has mm. been sending up topside. Great CSing. Remember 15 minutes into the game. The fact that he's able to go nearly perfect. Um, 16 actually, but nearly perfect in CS margins is really exceptional there from Natural. I mean, it was enabled by the fact that it's a longer lane, the Herald got two charges off, and that means that these uh, minions are going to be pushed very hard towards him. Actually quite difficult for Holder now, because if you take a look, it's not the fact that he missed CS, but he can't walk that far up into the lane, so always a priority for Natural. It actually hindered Rogue Warriors in the long run if they just keep the status quo. 
Nice wall coming up from the Braum, but now he's going to be the oh, point here we go. He has cleanse up just so he can get the hell out of there. But this can't last too long. Rogue Warriors need an answer to what Dominus has been throwing mid lane. Yeah, and they've got the poke, but they haven't got the all-in, Raz. You take a look at that and you say all of the roots and stuns thrown out, but DMO still not picking up a kill, still not getting priority onto the turrets. Must be risky because it puts RW in a good place. They'll have Ocean Dragon, so Dominus can stick around, heal up a little bit, and try once again, but the bottom lane wave is crashing into the dirt, so someone needs to end up picking that on. Oh, this is pretty risky here from Wei Yan, who's been... The primary target getting picked out. So, but they're going to be looking for the Ocean Dragon. They don't want Dominus picking up two, and there's no real contest coming in from Dominus. They're just going to let it happen. Yeah, I mean, partially shutting down Wei Yan was a good strategy for DMO. Of course, two deaths to his name. However, the one kill means that he's still doing just fine in terms of early game priority. Now pushing back towards the mid lane. This is the best place for them to be because Olaf doesn't actually contribute too much. You can't really clear the waves because your Q's on a long cooldown, and you can't engage unless it's uh, a full engage. You could tell that, you know, Rogue Warriors could just force their way through and defend up the mid lane just because a lot of resources from Dominus were used the, in the initial attempt at picking off Huang Gai. Taking a look at this, uh, very early on, there was a graphic that showed the fact that Mark ended up picking up Spellbook on the Tom Kench. If you look towards the full composition, you know, theoretically, they can have four teleports. They could. So, not only do they have that option, but... Tom Kench is going to always get you from one place to the other, the summary global that he has. The fact that Dominus can rotate from one side of the map to the other while still having, you know, Aurelia having side lane pressure. If we're talking about the mid game, it should be well in their own right to be able to pick up the advantage. What do you want to see from Rogue Warriors to stop the pressure, especially from what we saw in mid lane? So they definitely need to get some vision down. Of course, the next big objective will be up in one and a half minutes, and it is the Baron. So getting vision down onto there to make sure that the teleports are not available. Man, Twilight, that's deep. But the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Yep. Ultimate is still oh. there from Wei Yan. Didn't expect the empowered Q to hit that hard, but Gala is packing a punch. Yeah, so the fact that DMO can very clearly rotate towards the Baron, that should be the next place of contention. Once again, we've got to keep our eyes onto the uh, lanes and how they're folding out. Holder still having a very tough time diving into this, and he might be in trouble. Yeah, so not only did he have to concern himself about Natural if he was in the top lane, but the fact that Natural has been bot side, but he still has to respect Twyla, who shows himself top, shows, yeah, you're right in your initial assertion that he can't take, like, two waves extra, can't be too far up the river, or else he gets caught out and killed. He still has Flash, though, so he can play risky if he wants to. Yeah, so risky. I mean, the, the fact that Holder doesn't actually have a good lane to be rotating into, naturally the place that he wants to be put in is the bottom lane just because it's the longest for him but already consumed by Hua Tian means that he's going to have a tough time finding CS all the way around. You can see it reflected in the CS differentials. Yeah, don't think he wants to at least, uh, you know, freeze up a wave because the amount of pressure that you're seeing in the mid lane has been a constant point of attention for Dominus. But Dominus uh, losing the bot lane turret to the Corky. Yep. So the split push has been online there for Hua Tian ever since picking up the Trinity Force. So it's nice to be able to see that he's going towards the Infinity Edge first instead of the rapid fire cannon. So he's going to still be backing a punch while not having the extended range. Yeah, and it's always going to be a trade off because naturally DMO gave that bot lane turret up, but they wanted to keep their rotation resources of the ultimate from Tom Kench and the TPs. They want to get priority onto this Baron. They can always get dominance over it because it's a Varus with an ultimate, so Rogue Warriors can't walk into them and that's where they're looking towards. They sack bottom lane, of course, giving that gold over. They should be winning the next fights because of the resources. It's actually been a surprisingly respectful games from both of these teams. Rogue Warriors' previous set when they went up against LGD was Team Fight Heaven. Like both of these squads didn't give too much of a I didn't give too much respect to one another, but you can see that Rogue Warriors end up having that scale composition. They're pretty confident in their all in their team fights. Dominus again when they went up against JD, that was scrappy as all hell, but this time around, trying to focus on the vision control, focus on that side lane pressure that Aurelia is throwing out. So no one wants to be throwing the first stone. I'm just curious to see how DMO actually get Natural out of this hell. I mean, his farming itself is bringing him very good. Even though he's 0-2, he's still got a kill bounty on his name, but he just needs to get into these fights because that's what's going to propel them forward. But so far, Rogue Warriors just don't want to give it to them. All right, no vision on towards Baron, so you see Ezreal ends up throwing out his ultimate on that one. Top lane tower gets picked up by Dominus, mostly because of the vision that they have in the top side of the map. 
I mean, Natural has been pretty damn uh, confident. I don't think it's hell for him. 240 CS, 21 minutes into the game. He's picking up Raptors right now. Nearing uh, his second item at this stage. You could see the CS difference right there. Uh, or at least the gold difference. Mm. Not that significant. In fact, the GP is doing quite well for himself. Yeah. But the fact that you look towards... I'd say the, the, the bottom lane matchup. Mostly because Varus is doing really well for himself. Um... But yeah, ultimately a lot of that came through from the turret plating that Victor, uh, the the Varys, the <laughs> I keep saying Victor, That's uh, it. picked up in the bottom lane turret, but defensive ultimate from Holder just saying, get the hell away from me, natural. Yeah, and that works better for DMO, because obviously the GP ultimate, very influential when you're taking over objectives, when you're also alleviating sieges, so without that tool for the next two minutes, gonna be punishing for RW, but yeah, going back to your point, I think the fact that this gold is so close and distributed to whichever lane was winning is testament to where both of these two teams were focusing, but it's not significant enough that either of uh, their opponents have to really worry about it. Cloud Dragon is up and available. I don't think either team wants to touch that. Rogue Warriors honestly should because that would give them the third dragon, and with the pace of this game, Elder Dragon is going to be oh, yeah, definitely. an issue. Um, trying to contest the vision up topside, and Dominus are just going to allow them to do that. A lot of it is just kind of on a timer. Look into the minimap. Aurelia pushing up that wave, now forcing GP to be able to come and respond. And that's the time that you would expect Dominus to want to strike. So I'm concerned here. Rogue Warriors are going to be trying for this mid lane shove when they don't have the members ready. That's it. That's it. And also the fact that DMO can always re-engage. Ezreal actually e forward in that instance. If they pulled the trigger, the DMO could have taken that fight. But they opt not to because none of their members were there and in correct position. And ultimately, they're going to pay the price because you don't usually get that handed to you once again. Going Going straight for it, you have double AD carry on your side and already getting vision with the redemption being thrown out there. So Dominus were ready and prepared on that one. Expecting that one to come through, but that also made it so Rogue Warriors away from their mid lane outer turret. They've been trying to keep that one alive for this entire game. And the fact that it was able to be picked up just based off that risk that Rogue Warriors were going for, pretty surprising. Vision game very strong, and uh, even though they lost out their ward, they immediately placed the uh, they immediately placed the redemption down. Means the DMO get a lot out of this, Raz. They get the turret, and they can also start rotating towards the Drake. Actually opting not to go for it, because they just don't want to be out of position for the uh, Baron. The Baron is, of course, the Hail Mary for both these two teams. Yeah, and Dominus seems to just be trying to... Uh, keep Rogue Warriors an arm's reach away. Uh, last time we saw the items, Natural is going straight towards the Steric Gauge. The moment he completes that, he can just go compete and try and dive straight towards the Ezreal. A lot of risks involved in that one, but that's a way you can come into this one, Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Landing and a lot of damage onto Huatian here. It's going to be risky to see them try and commit for this, but four members are ready and yep. here to just defend. Natural's here, however, the barrage. Yeah, the ultimate coming through. That's going to be Itong flashing away and giving away the mid lane outer turret. So that's turret for turret. Great pressure here coming in from Rogue Warriors. And it's mind games all around. Of course, you can always oh, threaten. So Dang. close. Yeah, you could always threaten the Baron because of your ultimates, but as soon as you expend them and your opponents are out of place, you naturally get a turret. So it's just tit for tat, but since both of these two outer turrets in mid lane have now been taken, we should be seeing less of that. It should just be a wave clear duty, and now really comes the point where if DMO don't pull the trigger, then slowly they're going to just give Rogue Warriors an advantage over and over because of the farming. Yeah. I'd say one person that doesn't have much of an advantage to his name is going to be Wei on Not only getting consistently picked out in the earlier game, but also... I mean, one of the biggest problems with going towards the full AD on the Olaf, as great as it is as a early game bridge, is that he can't touch this comp. Um, I mean, he has to really rely on his outright carries to be able to provide a safe amount of poke and damage before he comes in. Otherwise, he's just going to be on the constant defense. We'll see what ends up coming through. Uh, Dominus clearing out Baron Vision once again allowing time for Natural to shove out this bottom lane wave. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point, and it's uh, backed up by the fact that you can see Wei Yun's actually going towards an armor item, a defensive item for himself already. So naturally, he knows that uh, as the game goes on, it's going to be worse and worse for him, not only because, like you said, the Olaf influences early game much better than he scales into late, but also the fact that now he has to find resources inside of his jungle once again just to keep up. And we've already seen the collapse available from DMO Mark with his ultimate always catching out uh, Wei Yun. A lot of ways to get out of CC Rogue Warriors have. Zhang Wuji has his QSS. The cleanse is still there and available from Watian. And Huang Gai can technically go back towards his cleanse when he's gone through a full amount of Also the oranges. Sums. Yeah, and you're right. The oranges that Holder has. So that's the concern Dominus has when they picked up this composition to force these fights and to have Twyla 
at least output some damage off the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. They didn't expect this level of uh, defensiveness. That's it. And because this game is so stale and it's just back and forth with the uh, with the two mid lanes constantly getting pushed forward and backwards, we have got to be taking a look at the late game and scaling definitely favors Rogue Warriors. I mean, their champs look very great at six items. Yeah, in a team fight, you're right. Let's see what roll the dice. What's the next dragon going to be? It looks like Mountain Dragon. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the next one in four minutes' time. Uh, Rogue Warriors just do not want to start Baron. If you look at the composition they have, incredibly squishy outside of the Brom. So if they play a Baron dance while it's aggroed onto them, they're going to be taking quite a lot of damage. One Mountain Dragon does make it so. You saw the earlier uh, run that they were making to go for a full burst on it before they were spotted. They can try that once again. It's like Dominus are always prepared for it. Naturally could, but one of the things that I have to focus on right now is, of course, how they distribute their lanes. Because we're getting to the point at which grouping up as five men or even four men into the mid lane hasn't come to fruition. And because the two uh, outer turrets have been taken, they don't actually want to step out very far into the opposing team. So checking out where they actually go, it looks like a very nice 1-3-1 one, one distribution from DMO. Of course, Twyla does not have his teleport, so always has to be hovering oh. around. Jungwoojie taking a lot of damage, leaving Wei out to dry now because of that. They end up getting out, but they cannot contest for vision as much as they've been trying to. And what's really fun to talk about is the fact that Dominus and Rogue Warriors have changed holistically in terms of, like, no, how they've approached the year. Mm -hmm. Dominus has been a team that just consistently looked to fight around Chang Hong's engage, but obviously since the change, have been playing far more 1-4 focused. While Rogue Warriors, a team that really prided themselves when they came into the league with Doonby and SMLZ, even with the squad that they came in currently is that they were Warriors, they are fighters, they looked to team fight as much as possible, but because of their current problems that they've been having, trying to play this one out as slowly and as smart as possible so they don't make any grave errors before those fights happen. I mean, it's still living on in terms of the playstyle, just not executing to the same, uh, to the same uh, level as before. Of yep. course, Hua Tien roaming very heavily for his team, getting his bot lane priority as well. However, looking over towards GMO, Lord have mercy that 332 CS from Natural, Dang. who's been farming up jungles on cooldown, have been essentially given the entire lane to himself since mm. GP doesn't want to contest him. Mm -hmm. So it's been very apparent what Natural has been able to get for himself. So when we're talking about, you know, possible itemizing from Natural, he ends up picking a Titanic outright. Yeah, I'm going to call it right now, Rez. Normally, if your top lane is spikes in the mid game, like something like a Renekton, then you want to put down your Rift Herald in top lane in order to get him out of his lane. But Gangplank wants to stay in his lane, so the fact that you took it away from him actually just empowered Natural so much, and you can see the fruition of that right now. Well, I mean, both of them got that handshake, right? He has I, E, and Essence Reaver, which I have rarely seen from competitive Gangplank. Yeah, because they don't get fast. given games like these, honestly. Both of these teams are too afraid to engage, but a lot of damage has been put down by Aitong. But the moment they see any resistance, they back away. So, yeah, both teams have given themselves that handshake. They're like, all right, I'm going full crit GP if you're going to have that going on. And, you know, Natural says the same damn thing. GA is there from Natural. He has no excuse to not fight. Going straight Ooh. in now. A lot of DPS being thrown on the Braum, but he gets a way out. So a lot of that for nothing. Resources from Varus now gone. And Wei Yan moving up. GP oh, no, is putting so much DPS on Gala's head. He needs to get the hell out of there. So close to being able to get that poke on Gala. In fact, good positioning on Baron. But if this damage comes through... All right, just want to see what Twilight can end up getting down. Because right now, Rogue Warriors are incredibly healthy. And they're moving to start up Baron. The power of itemization. Every, anybody can get out of CC without dying. And now Rogue Warriors have the Baron advantage. It is unseen, Rex. Yeah, unseen. They know that they're on it. But unfortunately, don't know what Dang. HP it is on. Still able to burst it down with the double AD carry that they have. Natural is in position to start a fight. Sleepy Trouble do Bubble does hit the Corky. But how effective is this going to be? They have no vision on them whatsoever. They're going straight into uncommon ground. All right, all in. Irelia Ultimate does hit its target. Same with the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. That's it. You got to keep your Baron buff alive, Rogue Warriors. No one dies just yet. No one wants to start the fight. Dominus are trying to force it. And now they're on a bad position. They are on the wrong side of the map, and they're not allowed to back. All right, at least send members out slowly. Holder is in position for a ball. Oh, big boy barrel. Hits another target. Natural is going to die as well. Rogue Warriors were so confident that they were going to get the fight that they wanted. But you saw 
what Holder saw there. Oh boy, that was a ridiculous barrel from Holder to just burst down everyone and in all honesty, that was way too gung-ho. You could see what DMO wanted. They corralled yes. Rogue Warriors into a, a position which they couldn't back, but waited a little bit too long and Gangplank got the set up. All right, not only did they got that big Baron buff, now we're starting to get that push. Maybe they get themselves an inhibitor. Long death timers here from both Twyla, Gala, and Natural. And we haven't been checking in with that Raz just because we haven't seen uh, any fights happen for about 10 minutes. However, the death timers are so long and punishing it immediately. Still 20 seconds on Natural. He can't even defend the top lane after the inhibitor's down. And for a game like this, you can see how big one small error ends up giving you. Because it came down to the fact that they had no vision on the GP. They walked up just close enough for two huge hits, and one of them was on a major tank, so Itong wanted none of that. That was it, and then they fold forward as well, so you could see the collapse potential onto them. Natural, the only person frontlining for the side of DMO. Nobody else actually backing him up, despite the fact that Itong could have jumped in, means that, uh, yeah, sad advantage just went over to Rogue Warriors. Very rarely do you get to see this build on a GP in competitive, and just as rarely do you get to see a barrel set up like this in yep. a GP game. That's what happens when a team is just so afraid to pick the fight. Dominus were in a position where they had to go for it, failed on it. Remember, second series of the day is going to happen in Xi'an. It's going to be Team WE going up against Invictus Gaming. That's going to be a great series, but we've got to finish this one first, Raz. Are you and, sure uh, about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right, thank you. I'm going to call that one, but but right now, you've got to give props where it's due. And I'm going to take one step back from Rogue Warriors and not actually say that they played that last team fight and also the Baron take well. But I'm going to say that itemization allowed them to get them to this point. Of course, we were touching on the point that uh, they have so much disengage from CC, pretty much every single member can get out of it. And that was the MO coming out from uh, Dominus. So the fact that that was completely denied away, no stun, no, uh, no roots, could have ever locked down somebody from Rogue Warriors, allowed them to scale towards the late game. And when you check in with their uh, comp, it just works out so well. Look, Preacher, you're right about one thing. At the end of the day, if one person is going to get an MVP on Rogue Warriors' side, if they win, it's going to be Juan Guy. Mm. Juan Guy, the man who has actually just stopped 100% of these engages. I've seen a lot of wonky LPL stats. That one would be a very legitimate one. We'll have to see if they can clean this one out, though, because at the end of the day, they're grouped up. Gives Dominus an opportunity to start a fight. Yeah, I mean, it It depends on what is being burned. It's a so lot of damage dang. on Holder's head. So he has to back up and away. And this is my concern if you don't have people up in the mid lane, but they do have that inhibitor up top lane, and that's Aurelia completely taken aback on that one. Down goes the Varus, down goes Tom Kench as well. There is no way Dominus could push this one back. Yeah, Natural wasn't even in position, and Rogue Warriors, they just pulled the trigger. Just like that. The game didn't even seem like it was beginning with how much they were CS uh, you know, farming up. But just like that, off of one Baron, one team fight, Rogue Warriors pick up game one. The build coming out strong from Rogue Warriors, and yeah, giving it over to Huang Guy as well, tanking up and soaking up the CC and the engagers so DMO could never actually take it, giving his team the avenue into the late game. They got to the late game, and yeah, all of their champions look scary. It's just as simple as two setups on Baron. The first time around, Rogue Warriors tried to go for it. They were batted away. Dominus had vision on that. One was okay. The second time around, way too quick on it. The items were already completed, and the only option that Dominus had was to commit to the fight, the fight that they ended up getting blown away from that GP. That was it, and even after the Baron was taken, they still wanted to commit. Extra AD and extra AP not going towards their favor. I mean, that GP barrel was massive. All right, speaking of massage, as we look oh. towards the... <laughs> look at that. Yeah, the damage charts is telling one thing, and another thing is also just the gold difference. For the longest time, this game was at an even standstill gameplay. So you already mentioned that, you know, both teams are fairly confident Mm -hmm. out their style natural on side lane trying to pull attention away but the one that was pulling the most attention was the baron setup that rogue warriors had and that was ultimately the difference and they were always keeping their eyes on it as soon as both of the outer mid turrets fell it was a handshake all around but of course dmo they kept their eyes on it they always wanted to get a pick just so they could get it but time and time again no picks available towards them yeah it was a dirty handshake i think mm -hmm. Rogue Warriors didn't commit to it. They were always trying to find that one advantage, and they finally got it. 
That was unfortunate from Dominus. Dominus was the team that should have been forcing the pressure. Not only did they have sure. the early game, not only was Twyla actually just wilding out in the early laning phase, but they had multiple points of engage that they never went towards. They were just way too confident in splitting the sides of the map. Yeah, but here's the question. How exactly do they actually force that? Because we saw them try multiple times. The uh, the Zoe uh, Sleepy Trouble Bubble was thrown out, unfortunately disengaged, and the Varus ultimate as well. They ultimately had no actual way to start it up because Cleanse QSS got rid of it all the time. Uh, so they constantly tried to fight on, you know, the Brahms yeah. term. They could, they had multiple, you know, semi-globals. Yeah. They can put, force the fight on towards the GP on mm -hmm. side lane. They just decided not to. And so whenever the Brahm was near the team, it was like, all right, guys, then now we can start the fight. A lot of it comes to setup. There's a reason why both of these teams are amongst the worst within the LPL, and we got to see a good glimpse of that. I'll take that. I mean, I just want to expand, uh, expand on the fact that Mark was actually really good in the early game. Yes. I mean, his ultimates caught out the opposing jungler. However, he just stopped using them, and he just stopped uh, abusing the fact that people all caught out by themselves could have potentially been collapsed on. Yeah, at least way on to the point that you made. At least the way on learned pretty, pretty quickly. The fact that, you know, he ended up dying twice because of those engages mm -hmm. that the Tom Kench ended up picking up for himself. And the moment that wasn't an opportunity anymore, you know, Dominus really weren't creative enough to find something else. So pretty unfortunate on the side of Dominus that they weren't able to get that job done. Remember, it is Dominus Appreciation Day. Yeah. A lot of people out there are not happy and don't want to see them losing in a 2-0 setting. We want to be able to see them find something here. At the very least, give us a three-game series. I think that their minds are in the right place, but they just need better execution. Once again, they had the tools available, but they just needed to actually use them in a proper manner. Let's see if the execution in Game 2 is going to be any better, as we are going to be going off to a break, and we'll see you then for Game 2.